What's up, FRT community? Another question here. This one's been about two weeks in the making, so I appreciate the patience involved with this. Before I get started in these scenarios, what I'd like to tell you is just a big thank you because if you'd have told me a year ago that I'd be sitting here today exactly one year later, almost one year later, um, with uh, over 1,500 subscribers to this channel seeking out knowledge and information from me, I would not have believed you. And it's only because of you watching and and your involvement with the channel that has allowed it to grow like that. So I want to thank you all very, very much. I love the idea of reaching out and 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 hopefully making an impact not just here in um, in America, but you know Saudi Arabia, Germany, Holland, you know all these different places where people are, are reaching out to me from, uh, and and hopefully learning or at least supporting their educational journey while they learn to become respiratory therapists or even are currently acting respiratory therapists. So I just uh, Appreciate the opportunity and want to say thank you to all of y'all on um, uh, nearing about the one year anniversary of this channel's creation. So let's jump into this because I got a couple questions from uh, and they're related to each other. Both of them are related on the same subject, so I'm answering both in the same video. Herb Jones wants to talk about metabolic acidosis. The body compensates for that, and what do you do when you have a patient breathing 45 times? 45 breaths per minute, and they're on the ventilator. Okay, now this question came out and arose from my sepsis video. I'll link that up here in the top. So if you haven't seen that one, that is what sparked this question. Okay, and now I did reach out to Herb and try to get more information so I could have a better idea of what was going on with this patient, but I didn't get a response. And so I'm just going to go with the information that I have. Okay, so the sepsis video talks about metabolic acidosis, not just with sepsis, but with DKA, lactic acidosis, any metabolic acidosis, okay? Severe uh, prolonged extended diarrhea will cause a metabolic acidosis. The compensatory mechanism for metabolic acidosis is for the pulmonary system to remove more CO2. We do that through increasing minute ventilation. Typically, that happens by increasing our respiratory rate. So, Herb, you're exactly right. A lot of these patients who present with a metabolic acidosis are trying to compensate for that metabolic acidosis, and they do so by increasing their respiratory rate, which is, as you stated, tachypnea. Okay? Now, when you realize that, just realize that it doesn't always have to be through a higher respiratory rate. It can also be through a higher tidal volume because the key to removing CO2 is not respiratory rate alone and it's not tidal volume alone. It's the combination of respiratory rate and tidal volume, which gives us our minute volume, minute ventilation. Okay, so that's the first thing we got to drive home. Now, when you tell me that you have a patient with a metabolic acidosis and are breathing 45 breaths per minute on a vent, I got so many questions, like what mode are we in? What's the tidal volume set on? What, you know, so many, are they in AC? Are they in SIMV? You know, I, I, will, I have so many questions uh, that I'd like to know more about, but for today, I, I don't know anymore. So I just got to go off of this. Now, here's what I'm thinking. If I'm a respiratory therapist and you tell me blindly, call me on the phone and say, hey, Joe, I'm standing in front of this patient. They have a metabolic acidosis. They're breathing 45 times a minute on the vent. My first question is going to be, what's their minute volume? That's going to be my first question. Now, and then I'm going to ask, what mode are they in? So I want to know what mode and I want to know what their minute volume is. Now, if you're in assist control and Let's, let's just put this up here. Let's just say they're in VCAC, okay, and common mode, and they're on a tidal volume, let's say, of 400, then I know what my minute ventilation is now, right? I can simply come in here and go 400 times 45, and I know that my minute ventilation is 18 liters per minute. Now, a couple other things that come to mind here is breathing 45 breaths per minute in a volume control mode of ventilation gives us a very, very, very short total cycle time. So if you do 60 seconds divided by 45, so this is 60 divided by 45 breaths per minute, you get 1.3 seconds. That's 1.3 seconds total cycle time. That means the patient has exactly a little over one second to get the breath in, whether it's controlled by the vent or if they're breathing spontaneously, and then 
get it all out. All of that has to happen. You get the inhalation and exhalation. Both of them have to happen. I time plus E time equals total cycle time. So you can see here that this patient, depending on, like I said, with very limited information, you can almost assume that this patient has got to be air trapping on some level. It's very, it's very unlikely that a patient can sustain 45 breaths a minute completing inhalation and exhalation in 1.3 seconds over and over and over and over and over. So there's probably some air trapping happening here, which we could do some things to adjust. Now, my th question also on this is, is that if you're in VCAC, there's probably some level of breath stacking happening. Now, you could see this if you looked at your pressure waveform and you could see your pressure, two breaths happening, one right behind another, because like I said, you've only got 1.3 seconds. The vent gives a breath, the diaphragm is still dropping, the patient immediately triggers another breath because there's not much else time to do anything else, right? This patient is pretty much in and out, in and out, in and out. There's got to be some level of, of air trapping here and maybe even some breath stacking. And that breath stacking may be the result of a patient who's on a tidal volume that's not satisfying their need. Now remember, you can compensate for metabolic acidosis by increasing your rate and increasing your tidal volume. So this patient's central drive to breathe may be wanting a larger tidal volume. They, not, may, they may not be satiated with the tidal volume that is set. So that's the first thing I would look at. The other thing I would do, depending on the stability of the patient, they're breathing 45 times a minute, so you know they have a drive to breathe. I would try them in pressure support ventilation and see what they do when you let them breathe however they want to. Put them in pressure support. Again, don't know any other settings. So if they're on a PEEPA 5, then keep her on a PEEPA 5 and give them a pressure support of 10 and see what happens. So if you have a minute ventilation of, what do we say, 400 tidal volume, 45 times a minute, that's an 18, 18 uh, liter minute ventilation, which makes sense because they're trying to compensate for metabolic acidosis. If you put that patient in pressure support and their tidal volumes go up to 600, their rate, will most likely go down to about 30 because that's what their fo that's what their brain is focused off of driving or, 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 or initiating is getting this adequate minute volume to adequately remove this CO2. So I would try them in a different mode. I don't ever get stuck in, in one mode, VCAC. Oh, the patient looks like crap, breathing 45 times a minute. I don't care what the scenario is. It, it, something's not right. The patient is not happy in this mode got to fix them. Now, if you put them in pressure, maybe the patient's already in pressure support. Maybe, maybe they weren't in AC. Okay. So maybe this 45 breaths per minute was in pressure support. Well, here I'm going to increase my pressure support to try to help them generate a larger tidal volume, which in turn should bring that rate down. And that's the key. If you want to get somebody's rate down, you got to give them a higher tidal volume. And I'm not talking about dangerously high to the point to where we're going to cause barotrauma or ventilator induced lung injury or something like that. But you got to get that you got to get that patient's volume up. That'll create a larger alveolar tidal volume, which makes more each tidal volume more effective. Each tidal volume will remove more CO2, and that's how you get that rate down. Okay, Herb. I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that clarifies with the limited information. That's probably about the best I can do. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if this is Marcial or Marshall or exactly what it is, uh, but Marshall added to this comment and said, hey, I saw the same thing. Here's my numbers. Here's what I saw. He had a patient, 7.31, CO2 was 37.5, PaO2 was 133, and bicarb is 19. This is a metabolic acidosis. Okay. Now this patient is on AC or VCAC with a set rate of 20, a total rate of 24, tidal volume 500, people 5 and 35%. What would I do here? Probably nothing. This patient sounds like, okay, let me tell you why I would probably do nothing. Okay. First of all, it all depends on pressures here and, and other things, right? But from the information I have, I have a patient who seems to be Triggering above the set rate in AC, so these are probably all 24 of, his, of, of this patient's breaths. I, I don't have a problem with this. My minute ventilation, 500, 24 times a minute, is a minute ventilation of about 12. That makes sense. Minute volume is up to try to help compensate for the metabolic acidosis. That's probably my only concern with this scenario is because with a minute ventilation of 12, 
I would probably suspect my CO2 or hope my CO2 was a little lower than 37.5, which would help bring this pH up even a little more. Um, but it's not, and, and, and that's not okay. I'm, this, this pH, while it is acidotic, is not dangerously acidotic like, my gosh, patient's about to code. It's not 713, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so uh, what points in the positive things I like about this scenario is this right here. 35% and 133. Now, when you look at this, what this tells me is that my patient's lungs at least appear from an oxygenation standpoint to be adequately exchanging gas very, very well. You got a PaO2 of 133, you got an FiO2 of 35%, you do your PF ratio, and you get 380, and we like that. Okay, we like a PF ratio of 380. That's a good sign that your patient is not presenting with a shunt or some diffusion defect. Okay, so, so this patient seems from a PF ratio, I like the adequacy of oxygenation and the efficiency of oxygenation. My only question is what's going on with this? Why are we at a bicarb of 19? What's the cause and what are we doing to treat it? Because see, this, we can get this fixed relatively quickly if we can fix the problem of the metabolic acidosis. So that takes us to our next question. Does this patient have an increased anion gap or a normal anion gap? If it's an increased anion gap, you have to figure out what the problem is for that increased anion gap. And you have to treat that. Okay. If this is the result of a normal anion gap, then you have to ask yourself, well, what causes an a normal anion gap that can cause a metabolic acidosis. A normal anion gap tells you that the body supply of bicarb is diminished. It's been lost from the body, okay? So the bicarb is actually down. I mentioned earlier severe diarrhea. That can cause a loss of bicarb. And in that case, you would give this patient bicarb and relatively quickly you would see this restored. Once this goes back within normal range, you're gonna see your patient's minute ventilation correct as they allow their CO2 to go back up closer to 40. And that's fine. If there's an increase in anion gap, you have to ask yourself, is it lactic acidosis and do we need to focus on perfusion? What's, what's my blood pressure? Is it uh, you know, DKA, is it diabetic ketoacidosis? And do we need to, to, to give insulin? Do, you know, what is it? What's the problem? You know, is this an end-stage renal disease patient and we need to get them to that dialysis? There's lots of different variations on what exactly the problem is and what the problem causer is on here. But from a pulmonary standpoint, I don't know if I would do anything with this patient with the information that I have. So you're not going to want to increase the rate. We say, well, what if you increase the rate just by two breaths to get the CO2 down a little further? Well, you may could do that, but you can't increase it to 22 you would have to increase it above what the patient is triggering on their own. Because see, you increase this to 22 and you're still gonna have a total rate of 24. Because in assist control, if the patient is breathing over the vent, when you see a total rate of 24 and a set rate of 20, that does not mean that the patient is triggering four additional breaths. That means that the patient may be triggering all 24, the patient may be triggering 12, and the, and the, and the vent is time triggered giving the other, you don't know. You don't know what, what this breakdown looks like unless you're standing in front of the vent and look at it. So if you increase this rate to 22, you're not gonna change this. Because the patient's already triggering 24 breaths per minute, depending on how that breakdown happens. Okay, so if you're gonna increase the rate, you can't confuse this, you can't go to 22, you're gonna to have to go to 26 if you just wanted to increase by two. Or if you wanna increase by four, you gotta to go to 28. And you have to get the vent breathing more often than what the patient is triggering. And then you can drive the CO2 down lower. But for me personally, with these numbers, I'd be more focused on what are we doing to fix this I love this. I love the PF ratio. What are we doing to fix the, the, um, the metabolic acidosis? And as long as my patient stays good here, I would let them roll. I wouldn't do anything. I'd put an entitled CO2 monitor on them and monitor my ventilation status of this patient. That's what I would do. Now, if there's asynchronies happening and, and, and you got breath stacking happening and things like that, which it doesn't appear to be, this seems like a patient looked pretty you know, just from this, it looks like the patient was cruising pretty good. So I talked about total cycle time up here on 45. 
And I told you we had up here, we had a total cycle time equals 1.3. Well, let's just illustrate the difference here. 60 seconds divided by 24 is a total cycle time of 2.5 seconds. Okay? Now, that doesn't sound like that big of, of a number. Much, it doesn't sound that much larger than 1.3, but when we're talking about when we're talking about seconds in allowing a patient to inhale and exhale, this is almost total cycle time. This patient has twice as long as, as this patient breathing 45 times to get all of their air in and all of their air out. Now, if they're on a tidal volume of 500 and a flow of 60, then that gives you an eye time of roughly 0.6 seconds. If you're on a decelerating waveform, which you probably are, you're probably closer to 0.75 seconds, and you still have three times that amount of time to get that air out. So this 2.5 seconds total cycle time, not too concerned about it, probably not air trapping. If they look comfortable, I'm, cru I'm cruising. I'm not doing anything. If they don't look comfortable, then I'm going to figure out what's, what's causing the asynchrony. Is it agitation? Is it flow hunger? Is it breath stacking? What is it? And then I treat that. But from a metabolic acidosis standpoint, Mechanical ventilator management, I'm rolling with this. Probably not going to make any changes and probably get them extubated as soon as possible. As soon as we get this fixed, probably trying to get this patient off the ventilator ASAP. Herb and Marshall, I, I hope I said your name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this makes sense. And anybody watching, if you have a comment and want to add to it, feel free to do so. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And best wishes, guys.